Today, King Captain Forrio, having committed treason in our great city. You hater, we hater, give it up for the Lone Rebel! Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Timothy Adon. Welcome back to another episode of Integrating Wise into Unreal. It's been a little while. Uh, I've been trying to get a lot of different things working in Unreal as well as working on a couple of my own personal projects, but it has now finally culminated into this. In today's episode, we are primarily going to talk about RTPCs, uh, but we but I am also going to give a little update on what I have worked on in the game so far. It's not going to look like too much has changed, but a lot has actually gone on in the background. So let's start off with the easy stuff. Uh, first off, you're going to notice this long shaft that I have uh, built into my starting room, which leads down to an elevator, which you will have noticed in the opening sequence. Uh, I put that together because like, this is kind of where I was going with, with this when I started this project, um, and eventually there will even be stuff on, going under, under here. But for now, uh, this is the primary... This, this is the primary function of the game. The character starts off on the elevator, the elevator goes up, rise, raises you up into the arena, and then you get to start fighting infinite numbers of bad guys. And it took me a while to figure out how to get an elevator to work, even though it is actually extremely simple. But let me show you the world. I want to know what love is. Okay, so the first thing you will have noticed uh, in the little intro that I that I had there is that I actually have a menu now, sort of. One of them starts the game, the other one quits you out, which is very handy. There's also an escape menu to, that'll that'll do the same thing, because I started uh, testing this out in standalone mode, and of course, if it's in standalone, it's really hard to quit if there's no quit button. So I made sure that that worked. Um, so over here. I have my two buttons in the beginning. And what I have that set up to is, obviously, if the quit button is hit, it quits the game. It's very simple. But if you click Start, I have it so that it removes the buttons, removes the widgets, and then it gets the, uh, the level intro interface. And for each of those, it announces Ah, there it is. I was I was wondering where the start elevator was. So it sends an, a message to send to start the elevator, which is its own interface. And it will also get all of the speakers in the game that have the level intro interface and then starts the announcer talking with a slight delay that I have set up in Wise. So the elevator, once it receives the start elevator message, uh, starts the elevator sound, and then waits a half a second, and then begins an elevator timeline. And the timeline takes the elevator's starting location and the elevator's ending location, and Basically, I have it set up so that it takes 10 seconds to go from its starting location to its ending location. And then once it's finished, it plays the, uh, the, the wise event that stops the elevator sound. Which in wise, if we go look at that, elevator start, I have a looping sound, I have a starting sound, and I have an ending sound. The, the starting sound, let me see if I can find it, environment, elevator, elevator start, and elevator stop, and the loop, which just goes forever. I was very happy putting that together, by the way. You might notice part of that is a train sound. <laughs> um, so how that works is elevator start plays the start sound and then plays the loop at the same exact time. 
And then once the elevator stop event is called, it immediately stops the loop, fading it out over five seconds. And then plays the elevator stop sound immediately. In addition to the elevator, I also put, uh, utilizing all the things that I've talked about in previous videos, I put a room volume, which is actually kind of hard to see here because I can't click on it, um, as well as an acoustic portal so that the sounds that are outside of this room, mainly the announcer intro coming from the speaker right there, will be a little dumbed down going into the room, and it'll also have its own reverb, which is which will affect the elevator on its way up. Now, while you're on the elevator, I have all the controls disabled until you hit this trigger, which then gives you control of your character back, as well as starts the enemies spawning. So those are all of the little changes that I have made. The biggest thing is my use of RTPCs instead of attenuation in order to get the overhead speakers and the wall speakers to work. So you'll notice on every wall face on the starting room, I have a little speaker. And what I wanted to have happen is I wanted it that when I got close enough to a speaker, the overhead, the volume of the overhead speaker would go down and then the, the, the volume of the wall speakers would go up so that you can hear them. And it took a little bit of finagling and I'm actually trying to remember which, uh, which blueprint is, is actually responsible for making this work. Wall speaker. I did this a couple times in a couple different locations to make it work. For each of them, okay, it's got to be it's got to be this one. So, here's how I have this set up. And actually, let me give you a quick demonstration of what I'm what I'm doing before before I explain how it's working. So we're gonna start. Today, contestant for Rio, having committed treason in our great city. You hater, we hater, give it up for the lone rebel. And yes, that is me. So I have a test sound on my right click. And if I go close enough to a speaker, You will also notice that I actually have uh, heckling sounds triggering when I take damage. Um, so you'll notice that when I got close enough to the wall speakers, my test sound turn turned from a white noise, which is coming from the overhead speakers, to a, uh, to a square wave, which is coming from the wall speakers when you get close enough. So what's happening is and I was and you'll you'll notice that uh I was trying to do this if you remember from it was either the I think it was the second episode I did where I was trying to do attenuation with the robots uh, that I was trying to do the same thing but I couldn't quite figure out how to get it to work and although this is still not you know I realized that attenuation is what I was looking for there here RTPCs work really really nicely so what we were doing is on every tick. We're getting all of the wall speakers. And for each of those wall speakers, we're throwing them into an array. We're getting the distance between each wall speaker and yourself. And we are taking that and comparing it with each of the other wall speakers. If that distance is less than the 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 smallest dis then the smallest distance recorded it will set the smallest distance recorded being the closest speaker and then that value becomes the new rtpc value and then we print to string so that we have a log on our screen as to how far away we are. And I was extremely excited to get this working, and also that it was a fairly elegant way to get it working. Uh, I got 
some examples online, but for the most part, I was actually able to figure this out on my own. And I was, I was, I'm, I, I'm giddy. I am extremely giddy. And so how I have it set up in Wise, is uh, I have two sets of all of my announcer audio. Uh, I have, and it's all the same audio, I just copy and pasted the audio as well as the containers between the two uh, actor mixers. So one of them is overhead, one of them is wall speakers. Both of these have RTPC set up for volume. And I have it set up so that it's uh, uh, 600 centimeters. So what happens is uh, as you get closer, so this is the, the overhead speaker, and if you are further than 600 centimeters away from all of the wall speakers, this is where the volume plays at. But once you get within 600 centimeters, the volume of the overhead starts to dip, while the volume of the wall speakers starts to go up. And then if you're right next to the wall speakers, it plays at bass volume while the overhead is completely cut out. And the overhead completely cuts out at uh, 175 centimeters. But I was extremely happy to get that working. And so I can also use that to play around with effects and stuff if I wanted to, uh, to have some of my effects get modified by RTPCs. I can do that using the same one which is extremely awesome. And so right now I only have uh, heckling for when you get hit, which is a random container between the two different heckles I have recorded as well as silence. And silence is set to a really high weight. Disconnect. Uh, a really high weight so that most of the time when you take damage, not, the, the, the announcer isn't going to say anything. Because otherwise, if you get hit too many times in a row, it would get extremely exhausting really fast. I might even change the weights on this even more now that I know how fast I get hit in, uh, in the game right now. But eventually, what I'm going to have set up is every X number of seconds, I think I'm going to say like 5 seconds or something, there will be a chance that the announcer will say something else based on how well you are doing and what your score is, which I don't have a score or value set up yet. That's going to be the next thing that I work on as well as a timer so that the game will end automatically after a set amount of time. As far as actually getting the heckling to work, um, I've, I've discovered that interfaces are top notch in getting all of your blueprints to communicate with each other. So how I have that working is I have, oh my gosh, I have a cat on my lap. First off, that's, that's a very important, a very important item that is necessary for this. No. Uh, so what I have is, oh man, I keep on clicking on the wrong things. Uh, speakers. There we go. So I have an interface called speakers. That interface has three different functions in it. Damage heckle, timed heckle, test speakers. Um, timed heckle doesn't do anything yet. I know, such good good names, great naming convention. Um, but both of these are currently functioning. So how this works is if we, actually first let's go over here. So this is how I was doing the testing the speakers. Uh, if I click the right mouse button, I get all actors that have the speaker interface, which would be the overhead speaker and the wall speaker. And then I send the test speakers message, which if it receives the test speaker message, it will then play the white noise test event uh, in this case, which actually plays a square wave tone in the case of the wall speakers. And then for the overhead speakers, it plays the overhead white noise sound. Whereas in order to get the actual recorded vocal heckling done, uh, 
player damage. So at the end, or actually towards the middle, after the player's health has been set after taking damage, and the new RTPC value has been generated for what the player's health is currently at, um, that matters for uh, if you take too much damage, then the sound of everything gets dumbed down. I actually don't know if that's working. I haven't heard that work at all, but I'll check that later. Um, it will then get all actors with the speaker interface again and send the damage heckle message, which is up here, which will then play the play getting hit uh, speaker sound in WISE. And both of and so both the overhead speaker and the wall speaker have their own versions of that, which are then affected by the distance RTPC between the player and the wall speakers. Pretty cool, right? That's all I have for an update today. Um, we talked about we talked about the elevator, we talked about the room that I put in there, and as well as how the elevator works, we talked about RTPCs and setting those up uh, to give you a alternate form of attenuation uh, between the wall speakers and the overhead speaker, and talked a little bit about what's going to happen in the future. Um, it's probably going to be a while before the next update, because most of what's going to end up happening that I'm going to be working on is not going to be audio related. Uh, so uh, pro it's probably going to be another month, month and a half, especially since I have a vacation coming up. So another month, month and a half before I have another update put up. And it's mostly going to be uh, game elements as opposed to audio elements. But if I do end up figuring out something really, really cool, then I'll be sure to post about it in the future. Uh, if you have any questions, absolutely feel free to leave them in the comments below and I will answer them either uh, either by responding to your comment or by making a video about it if it ends up being a big enough question and also speaking of the comment se section thank you so much to those of you that have been commenting and saying that my my videos have been helpful it actually really helps to know that uh, that my videos have been helping somebody and I sincerely appreciate all of the thank yous. So thank you for watching my videos. And that's all I have for you today. So I hope you have a wonderful day today and I will talk to you again in the future. Bye-bye.